we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Living Father, we believe your Almighty. We believe you help us at dawn. At this dawn, may our eyes be opened. May we be able to take all the blessings that Jehovah has prepared. May I do well so that my children do well. And moment by moment, may we be witnesses of doing more well. Has the devil been keeping his eye on us? Even the Lord, the devil followed him. But with the blood of Christ, may we cast him out. And may we only receive the blessings that you guide us to. Starting from me, may I be happy and satisfied and sing praises. And our families, may we receive blessings. May our children live within happiness. May we be blessed and help others. This dirty, filthy man, I can't stand here because of my sins and my ancestors' sins. Because of this, the saints are suffering. Please forgive. Forgive me. And at this dawn, May we be able to have a new start as a new creation. May we obey the word and receive this promise. What is it that I'm boasting of? Am I boasting of money and and have that taken away? Am I boasting of health and have that taken away? Am I boasting of a good name and have that taken away? Am I boasting of my children and have that taken away? Am I Boasting, did I boast of my spouse? And then I'm crying now because it was taken away. Help us to realize that there is only the Lord Jesus Christ to boast of. And today, the whole day, may we only plant blessings and may we give profit to others and give you glory. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Let's say together, sheep. So when you're here, you may feel saddened. You may think, oh, it's too extreme. No. If we want to become a slave, no matter how extreme, we have to be able to say amen as if it's sweet. That's where miracles happen. Last night, as you were repenting, you know, now you'll have a peaceful heart. starting from me. I say, I'm dirty, I'm filthy, I'm worse than a dog. All I've done is torment God, even though my the saints are receiving problems. And, you know, and after I confess this, my, my heart is so at peace. Those who repent, they're at peace. Those who repent, as much as they repent, because they've become lowered, because they're small. Before, your heart was bigger than than a camel but because you you become small lower then you can pass through that needle's eye and so everything does well and it's not just me that does well but your children do well so if you genuinely pray and you you're at home then your children will contact you saying how well they're doing so don't don't say, oh, it's because I repented, but say, Lord, and you you lower yourself even more and your children will do more well. So our country, you know, the whole world's the same, but if something good happens, we all want to have a party. You know, even in the best book, the Nobel Prize books, it's, they'll all say, no poem will teach you that after you do well, the disasters that come, only the word can block this. So it may be hard to hear. But if I do well and we pray for our children, that prayer will happen exactly. So when you pray for others, they will receive answers too. So let's do good works. Helping others, that's good works. But many people, they think that helping others is good. But no, starting from me, I have to help myself. That's when you can help help others. If you yourself aren't doing well, how can you help others? So our country is in a time, it's like, it's like people are all, are all poking the beehive. You know, 
you think, oh, that person's so praiseworthy. And you poke around, but they're all thieves. So that's what keeps coming out on the media. Oh, this person, this gathering, they're so praiseworthy, but they end up being even bigger thieves. So there's no one to respect. In other words, it's exactly what the Bible says. Everything is rotten. It's so sad. If the whole body is rotten, what, what do you have to do? You have to be healed. So how can we heal? Only by the mystery of Christ can we become new. Even though you're rotten, a leper, inside of Christ, you're new. If you're all rotten, inside of Christ, you're new. So it's in Christ. That's the only way to become new. The country filled with problems. All these professors who act like they're better. And they're receiving all these bribes. It all comes out in the newspapers. You know, when I open the newspaper, it's so filthy, I can't look at it. So, all these presidents, all these professors, they're, pro they're all problems. So, they come out on TV, acting like they're better, talking on TV. If they're all corrupt, then what are we going to do? This is a time where no one can speak. So, the way to become new, does it lie in education? Does it lie in material things? How can you make yourself new? If there's only Christ. It's only Christ. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Let's find that. Let's receive help this dawn. We will all do well. You know, you think, oh, that's a good job. That's a treasure. But you go there and it's rotten. It's, it's filthier than poo. You think, oh, that job must be so respect worthy. And you go there and it's worse than dog poo. You think, oh, that that job, all these all these praiseworthy people gather there. You go there, and and it's like worse than chicken poo. You know, chicken chicken poo. If you put it straight onto a tree, the tree will the tree will die. It will even human waste too. But chicken poo is even more toxic. But it's these people who come out act as if in, acting as if they're better. They're the ones that ruin the country. So it's it's a complete mess. These judges, these lawyers, they're all going to jail, these professors. So where is it that they're not rotten? Everyone is rotten. So what are we going to do? There's nothing but problems. There's no answers. What are we going to do? So these rotten people saying, oh, this is the answer. This is what we should do. They themselves are rotten. There's nothing but the truth. Which religion? Yes. Yes, they may seem to give profit, but they can't make you new like God's word. So it may seem so discouraging. Oh, even the professors are all rotten. That's what keeps coming out in the news. So if they're all rotten, what are we going to do? You know, the world already knows from the past that the government officials are rotten, but what are we going to do? If there's nowhere to find answers, oh, it's own John chapter 3, verse 17. If you have demons inside of you, you hate the gospel, but this is the only way to live. So we have to come to the Lord. So, there is no other way but this. So, let's receive help this dawn. What help do we receive? Psalms chapter 46, verse 5. God helps at dawn. What help is it? It's the help of Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Let's read it together. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. So, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. So Jesus leads by the Spirit to kill his flesh because the flesh 
is our enemy. So he's led by the Spirit to kill the flesh. So let's find Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. So by fasting, after killing his flesh, that's when the de- devil leaves him. So it's because we don't kill our flesh. That's why the devil keeps sticking to me, it makes me blind, makes me stops me from receiving blessings. Let's read verse 11. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. Amen. So who is Jesus? Even Jesus, he fasted and after he killed his flesh. So I'm not saying to fast of your own lusts. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6, the only way to loose those bonds is by fasting. But it's not by my lusts, it's by it's being led by the Spirit. So even the devil followed the Lord, but the devil left him and then he changed so that the angels came and served him. So are we better than Jesus? So how much do we have to repent so that our flesh is killed? You know, it's not by fasting and, and piercing yourself with needles or something. No, it's by repentance to get rid of that filthiness, to confess that, to confess that I'm so filthy, then as those sins depart, then you become someone who the angels serve. Let's surely do this. And then after that, when you pray for others to receive blessings. So Jesus says to repent. What What is near? So it's by repenting that you can go to heaven. That's when, John 3 John verse 2, you can receive blessings and you're healthy. Because your spirit does well, everything does well, and you receive health. And so that you, you, then your children do well. So it's because of my flesh. Because I don't repent properly and you're a slave to your flesh. It's not heaven that comes near, but hell comes near. If you repent, then heaven comes near. So, if you repent, then blessings come. If you don't repent, then curses come. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15, because those two things are in front of you. So, if you repent, blessings come. If you don't, then you receive curses. So, repenting, how blessed is it to repent? So if you repent, you continue to receive blessings. But if you don't repent, you will receive curses. So we're supposed to repent three times a day. You do it briefly in the morning and the at noon and at, at, in the evening. So that's better than nothing. But if you find that you need to breathe, you know, then it's better to breathe throughout the whole day. You know, if you breathe just in the morning, and you block your nose, and let's say you have to breathe through your mouth, that's that's not comfortable. And then if you block your mouth, how are you going to breathe? So if we breathe, then we live. If we don't breathe, then we die. So if you repent, you receive blessings. If you don't, you receive curses. So do you want to repent or not? If you want to go to heaven, you have to repent. If you don't want to go, then you don't have to. So... What does it mean when it says to pray without ceasing? It means to repent. So let's read Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 again. From that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. So you have to repent. That's when heaven is in front of you. So you go close to heaven to receive those blessings. So if you want to go to heaven, you have to repent. But many people say they believe in Jesus. But do they repent? No, they don't want to go to heaven. Even those who are teaching this, you know, they they don't want to go to heaven. They don't repent. They don't go to heaven. So let's find 3 John verse 2. Your spirit has to do well. You have to go to heaven. That means everything else does well. Your child has to become like a man to give them pocket money. Even though it's your child, if they're not acting like a man, you know, if they're not like you put them in a mental hospital. So, God, he wants to give you blessings. But why can't he? Because you don't repent. 3 John verse 2, let's read it together. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. Amen. So, he gives you good health. He makes everything prosper. When? When your spirit does well, when you're going to heaven. So, when he says, repent, 
He's saying, then heaven will draw near. You receive the blessings of heaven. And the, otherwise, then you receive curses. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. There are two things in front of you. So, you keep coming up against things. But if you repent, whatever it is will change the blessings. You'll go to heaven. But if you don't, then you'll receive disasters and curses and problems. That's what it's saying. So, there's nothing as welcome as the words to repent. But to the fakes, if you tell them to repent, they're like, no, you don't have to do it once. There are people who still say those nonsensical things. So let's follow God. If we repent, then blessings come. Our children do well. Heaven draws near. So if you repent, heaven comes near. So you become someone who can go to heaven. You can receive the blessings inside of that. So we have to pray within the Spirit. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. We have to pray in the Spirit. So you have to receive the Holy Spirit and pray. So until you receive the Holy Spirit, you have to ask, ask and seek and knock. If you ask and seek and knock, then you receive the Holy Spirit. So just asking, is that receiving the Spirit? After you've been hit by your mom because of your because you've stolen. Uh, sorry, after you've After you've been hit by your mom, so Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, Luke chapter 11, yes, you're asking and seeking and knocking. So he says he'll give you the best, which is the Spirit. So asking and seeking is not receiving the Spirit. It's after you receive the Spirit that you have to pray. So they say, oh, if we ask, yeah, that's the answer. No, being beaten, being hit, Is that answers? You have to receive the Holy Spirit, and that's when you pray. That's when it's answers. So asking, seeking, and knocking is not answers. You're still being hit as you're being asking, and, as you're asking and, and and seeking and knocking. How much are you being hit that you're saying, "Mom, Mom"? You know, that's when you start to seek. Before that, before you were hit, were you asking? So, do we want to receive the blessings of going to heaven? Jesus' first words, how precious are they that he says to repent. In other words, everything else will, will work out. You'll go to heaven, everything will do well. If you repent, you'll even have health. If you repent, your children will do well, your country will do well. So, what do we repent with? There's nothing but the blood of Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, is this amen? So, what is it that we found? So, we read this. So God, he says, if you just repent, then you will go to heaven. This is the Father's promise. So just because you repent, does that mean you will go to heaven? Well, it says heaven draws near. So it means you have to keep repenting. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. So you were far off, but by the blood of Christ, you keep drawing closer to God. So we keep cl getting closer to heaven. So what is it to repent? So you're doing four-step repentance. If you do four-step repentance, heaven draws near. It becomes you. You you do well. You have health. Your children do well. Everything you pray for, God hears. But what is repenting? So if we give you too much in one go, you don't understand. Let's find Acts chapter 26, verse 20. What is repentance? It's going towards God. That is repentance. So Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. Only by four-step repentance can we go closer to God. That is repentance. So many people say, you know, if you give them one verse, they understand. But if you give them a lot, they're like, when have you ever said that? So how, how half-heartedly have you heard the tapes? So this one verse, Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. So repentance is to get close to God. If you get close to God, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6, God makes you alive or dead. He gives you blessings or takes them away. That's who we're going to meet. So if you meet him, your diseases are healed. So our saints, you know what's regretful? If you realize and know that it's God who gives disease and heals it, then you should know to repent. That's why it's come. But instead of repenting, 
you go off to get, you know, a needle or to eat medicine. You know, where has your heart been? Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, you can't catch two things. You know, was your heart at hospital or at God? No, it wasn't at God. So when I see that, and that's why their actions, you don't see them repenting with tears. They have nothing to do with God. They're just trampling the courts of, of the church. And that person always has excuses. You know, if you tell them to do something, they're always causing trouble. They don't work quietly like a slave. That's the problematic person. So if you're in that situation, you have to you have to realize soon there'll be problems coming to your to your family if you can't repent with tears. So then you or one of your family members will get a problem. So why did that happen? Because you didn't draw close to God. You got further from God. So because you got further, that's why problems happen. So the further you are, the more tormented you are. That's Luke chapter 15. The prodigal son, he got farther and farther away and he ended up in the pig pen. So if you get further from God, there's nothing but the pig pen where you don't have money, you don't have friends, no one can help you, you, you you're you at the point of starvation. Why? Because you departed. So how is it to, that you draw close to God? It's only by repentance. If you repent, then heaven draws near. You get close to God. That's what repentance is, to get close to God. That's what the Bible records. So how can you know, know, know this? The fakes. You tell them to repent. You know, without repentance, you cannot get to God. Acts chapter 26, verse 20, let's read it. But kept declaring both to those of Damascus first and also at Jerusalem and then throughout all the region of Judea and even to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, performing deeds appropriate to repentance. So it's by repentance that we turn to God. When we repent, we can turn to God. So all this time we were the side of devil, the the world, where our spouse relations don't do, do well, our children have problems. But if we repent, then we go towards God who gives us blessings and makes us do well. So what is repentance? It's to go to God. So repentance is for us to do well. Is We have to do this from dawn. You know, there are these fake churches that from dawn they're like, oh, how can you make people repent and say things that they feel upset about? You know, how? why would we have to repent from fornication? You know, fornication comes from our heart and our flesh. We have to repent of this so that we can turn to God, so that we can get rid of the disasters and curses. Is it amen that we meet God? If we meet God, then we fix our destiny. The only way to do this is to repent with the blood of Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. So what happens if you repent? Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10. Your spouse, your family, your church become one. So if you don't repent, you and I, who can win against the demons inside of you? Even Jesus. He he repented. To the, he fasted as he repented. And, and that's when the devil departed. But who are we that we can win over the demons? So what is repentance? It's to go toward meeting God. Is this our men? That's Acts chapter 26, verse 20. So whatever problem, whether it's my children's problems, my life problems, even if you're praying for others, you have to meet God to receive answers. So how much do you have to repent? You have to repent till the point you're at peace, where your heart's at peace. Let's do well. So last night, as you were pierced, and I'm sure you repented a bit differently yesterday. So what happened this morning? Now, Even now I'm refreshed. Even though I had collapsed from being so tired. But when I wake up, I'm so refreshed. If you wear clothes, you know, that are new, you feel refreshed. Clothes that are, you know, that are all sweaty, you know, you do feel bad. So this is getting closer to God. So whatever happens... 
to say that sin is mine. When we repent of other people's sins as mine, who do we go toward? So if we meet God, whose destiny is fixed? It's me and my children. A thousand generations do well. Let's all receive this blessing at this dawn. God is so good. From today, let's surely receive this blessing. Now there's nothing to grumble or complain against. We have to repent that that sin is mine and let's meet God. Repentance is the way to meet God. Is this Amen? Acts chapter 26, verse 20. Let's read it again. But kept declaring both to those of Damascus first and also at Jerusalem and then throughout all the region of Judea and even to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God, performing deeds appropriate to repentance. Amen. There's nothing but this mystery of Christ. There's nothing but to meet God. Starting from me, I have to do well. That's God's commandment. Starting from you to do well. So whatever happens if, with our spouse or whatever, it's to meet God. It, this problem is for me to meet God. Oh, this is so unfortunate. No, it's for you to meet God. It's for your descendants to do well. It's for your family problems to be solved. Let's all receive this and let's receive help at dawn. Let's all pray. Lord, what is repentance? It's to get close to heaven. It's to draw close to receiving blessings. We didn't understand Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. We thought if we didn't repent, then you can just live normally. But if you repent, then you receive blessings. And if you don't repent, you only receive disasters and curses. So repentance is the way to draw close to God. How precious is this promise? Now we know what repentance is. By completely repenting, may we meet God. What is it that I'm doing? Am I still being led by my flesh? Am I wandering around not knowing? Where, what's what? This storm, may we have a new start. No matter what anyone says, what I have to do is to repent. What I have to do is to meet God. I have to meet God to have my desires granted. That's when I can pray for others and to give them profit. Now that we've realized, no matter what happens, it's for me to to repent and to do well. So may we only give thanks. When we obey the word, that's when miracles happen. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen.